Um, so here's our uh, very simplified map of the world. There's, can people see? If you can't see, you might want to move because it's like, sort of important to see. <laughs> it's a visual demo. Um, there's 12 bins. Each represents five meters. Um, so this bin represents, it's got a zero meter on it. This represents anywhere from zero to five meters. This is from five to ten and so on. It's the 60 meter world. So we're going to start off, we're going to use these uh, candies to represent uh, units of probability. And I'm going to put, there's 12 bins, I'm going to put five uh, pieces in each bin. So what does that represent? <coughs> Exactly. We have no idea where we are. How much is each probability worth as a fraction? No. What? One minute. One what? One over five. One over 60. There's, there's going to be 60 of them. Yeah, so the likelihood of being in any given bin is 1 over 12. All right. This will be a little bit slow. All right, so something else. People can see these number 25, that the 25 and 30 meter point, they have a bar on them. See that? The, the, um, the cups? What is that? What do you think that means? Door. Yeah, so this is going to be a world with just one door. It's a 10 meter wide door from 20 to 30. All right. Maybe I should have pre-loaded these. I'm nervous, so it's not going as smoothly as my practice. <laughs> it's all right. You're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel really tough. <laughs> okay, these are extra now. All right, so we've got 60 probability units, and it's and the robot has no idea where it is. Right? This is like the robot's mind. These bins represent. I'm the robot, and I. I this is where I think I am. I have no clue as to where I am. I'm going to initialize the world with the robot here. But the robot doesn't know it's there. Paul, you're in the way. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to knock them over it. <laughs> um, the, yeah, the robot doesn't know it's there. It's, um, it's trying to figure out where it is. And so the robot doesn't know where it is. So, okay, what's the first thing we're going to do? We're going to move the robot. We're going to apply control to the robot. So. I'm going to uh, make the robot move for five, uh, five meters per second for one second. For the demo, the time unit will be a one second time unit. So the robot moves for five meters per second to, the, to your right for one second. So the robot's there. Now, what do I do with, the, what do I do with all the pills? I, I move them, right? I, yeah. I, so the way that I represent um, the robot's belief updating is I shift the histogram over with, a, with a, a, a movement model. So I just told the robot to move one, uh, one bin to the right. So I'm going to shift all these bins, one, uh, one bin to the right. The robot still doesn't know where it is, but wherever it thought it was before, it now thinks it's five meters over that way, right? So I'm going to do that. So I'm setting up the second set of... So this is why in the email I said you'll need two arrays, because when you're doing this, you don't want to just like move it within the same array. You actually want to populate a new array. So okay, so I'm going to take these, this probability and move it over five meters. I'm going to take this probability and move it over five meters. All right, what am I doing wrong here? This is sort of right, but what's the bug with this, what I'm doing? That's right. This, this assumes my movement model is idealized. That if I tell the robot to go five meters, what I just was demonstrating is a, a deterministic movement model, that it actually moves five meters. But that's not our model. Right? So the model that you were given is that something like there's a histogram of what I was just doing was something like this, move, moving over five meters precisely, but it's more like a histogram where the center is at the five meter point, but there's going to be some slump on either side. So I'm going to represent our, our Gaussian there with like a 3, 1, 1 ratio. So three probability units go to the, the center of where it should have moved, and then one goes to either side. So that's how I'm going to do the update now. So I'm going to bring these back and do it correctly. Put these on hand. 
Okay, so I, I started with the, 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 the units in the zero meter bin. I'm going to put three of them in the five, and then I'll put one on either side. And I'm just going to do this all the way the, across. So this is the movement update, three in the middle, one on either side. So you have to write the code to do this. You have to take the, the, the probability out of each of your 600 bins and distribute it across multiple bins per how fast you think you're moving. It doesn't all go to one place. What is, what is the level of noise? Do we know that? Yeah, yeah. it's a Gaussian. Oh, okay. It's a Gaussian where um, the, the standard deviation of the Gaussian is one third of your commanded speed. Okay. So the faster you go, the sloppier it gets which sort of makes sense. All right, so we're almost halfway. Through. We're almost through step two of this five step. This. Only we had a machine. Only we had a machine to do it. That would be A cool. robot, maybe. <laughs> that would be cool. For a program. All right, so I already moved the robot marker. So that's where the robot actually is in the world. It actually is. Oh, wait, something interesting is about to happen. Okay, so I'm at the, I'm near the end here. I'm putting three in from 50 to 55. I've got one here. What should I do with this one? Toss it. Yeah, I'm going to toss it. Now you could like you could have a world model that when you hit the end of the world you could incorporate that into your model. What happens in this world if we tried to go to the end of the world? Like, does this is this depending on whether we can't go to the end of the world or whether like if we hit the wall and we just stay there? Yeah. We shouldn't more pile up there? Yep. Yeah, it would be completely legitimate to let it pile up there because that's actually what happens in your world. Okay. For the purposes of the demo, I'm not going to do that because it will mess up the demo. You can also do it where you just throw away that probability and renormalize. Either way will work. So this one, there's five here. Three would go right here. One goes off two bins, but one does fall in there. Okay, so that's the movement update. So now we've got a prediction as to where the robot is. Looking at the histogram, what can you say about the prediction? The robot is probably not here. Right? It could be. There's a little bit of probability. That's if it didn't move when it thought it did. But basically, that's all we know. It's probably moved over. It's probably not there. OK, so now we're going to do um, take a sensor reading. All right, let's assume the sensor works properly. but it still only has a 0.9% probability of working properly. Let's say we got lucky, or we didn't get unlucky. So what do we see? Where's the robot? What? Wall. We saw a wall. So we'll say there's a 0.9 chance. So the idea is, if the robot is anywhere where there actually is a wall, we've got a 0.9 chance of seeing wall. Whereas if the robot were here and here at the door, there's only a 0.1 of seeing wall there. So here we resample. We basically, all we do is we multiply the wall bins by 0.9 and we multiply the door bins by 0.1. Because it, it's not very likely that we're at a door when the sensor just said wall. We're doing that because we see wall. Exactly. We're doing that because we see wall. Okay. We're using effectively this system. Okay. And it's position based. So what I, the way I'm going to model that is I'm going to say these each have five things in them. It, if we take 0.9 of that, it would be like a half a pill. I'll just put in one pill to represent. There's a little, there's a little bit of possibility there's, it's still there. And um, those would, now all the other ones we multiply by 0.9. And then you renormalize, right? So the way I'm going to renormalize is by taking all these bin, uh, pills and redistributing them. So we're, we're renormalized to the 60 pills. So I'm going to put them, I'll put them in the pill, the plate, actually it shouldn't go there, it wasn't very likely to be there. This is sort of cheating, but I'm basically going to put them in the places where there's lots of pills, so that's how now, I'm renormalizing. Could we, could we renormalize just by counting the number of pills that were in there yep. and saying that that's our new? Yeah, what you should do is sum of all the probability. Let's say it sums up to 0.5, and then divide each of the bins by 0.5, and then it will sum up to <coughs> You just want to make it, you scale them so that they'll add up to one. So figure out what they sum to and then divide. I've got a few pills left over. I'll just randomly put them places. Okay. Um, noise. Yeah, noise. That's right. Absolutely. So now where's the robot? It's probably not over here. Remember, it's only moved once. 
find out there, and it's probably not at the door, because we just saw a wall. But it's, we have no idea which part of the wall it's at. That's all more or less equally likely. Right? OK. So now what do we do? Back to the algorithm. Again. Yeah, we redo it. So we apply the control of the robot. We're going to move one bin to the right. OK, so now we do the movement update. Right, so now we update the histogram based on having gone to the right. So we take these and move them over. So, okay, this one moves. There's only one I'll put in the center. This one, there's six. So I'll put four, I'll put four here and one on either side. That's the, like, the, the, his, the Gaussian. This one's got like six or seven of them. I'll just put one on either side and the rest of them. I'll basically do that. That's my way of modeling a histogram. One on either side and the rest of the world. Right, there's only one here, I'll just move it over. There's only one here, I'll just move it over. Yeah, well, it's the one on either side is easier. Then I don't have to count out the center ones. Okay, this one, most of them fall off the world, but I'll put one here. Right? Oh, no, no, they all they, yeah, Oh, sorry. One, one, one goes there. there. One falls off. Yeah. Oh, one falls off the side. Um, that's all right. It's just <laughs> okay, this one, most of them fall off the side, and one goes in there. Okay, let me move these out of the way so you can see what the robot thinks. So at this point, what's the histogram? Which type of thing is it? It's a prediction, right? We haven't sensed yet. So we predict, we basically just shifted it over and sloppified it based on the movement model. So now we're at a door and we, and we take a sensor reading and the sensor doesn't lie to us. We see door. So what do we do? We strengthen the places that are doors. Those get multiplied by 0.9. Everything else gets multiplied by 0.1. So the way I'll model that is I'll just, I'm going to say that one goes to zero. The other ones, this is a, this is a wall. I'll, I'll leave one. There's still a small chance. There's still a small chance it's here. Still a small chance. I'll model the 0.9 by, by normalization. So I'll leave those alone for now because they're multiplied by 0.9. That one, that had two, it goes to zero. Okay, so we're almost done. We just have to normalize, and the way I'm going to normalize is, all right, I'm going to basically build up the bins that have got some probability left. So this one's got five. This one has two. So I'll split these at a, there's like a pretty big pile here. I'll basically split them into two-thirds, one-third. So I'm going to put like one-third of them in the place that has some probability. I'll put two-thirds of them in the place that have the most probability. Where's the robot? It's, there. <laughs> it's most likely to be there. We're not 100% sure it's there. It could, it could also be there. It, it could be anywhere, right? But if you say, where do we most strongly believe? We definitely most strongly believe here. And we're also, if we look at those two bins. Can you do, can you do one more? Just, it's, there's not that many cups left anymore. I'm serious. Okay. I'm serious. Because it, okay. it should just get higher, right? Yeah. It should just it, get better? It should, yeah. I, my question is, it doesn't, you're being nonchalant about tossing the beans in. But yeah. It shouldn't the, matter, right? The system, it should just take longer for this, the system with your nonchalantness to get it right, right? There, there is a maximum probability, or there is a maximum value that you can actually be certain of because of the smear. Well, there's the motion smear. There's also the sensor sometimes does get it wrong, and that will, like, mess up the distribution. Well, there, there is a piece unless you start saying, okay, well, I've been polling this, I've, you know, seen door you know, nine times out of ten for the last 10,000 trials, then I'm probably going to Like, if the sensor gets it wrong, then you're going to... No, I mean about how you're, you, you're tossing things in the cups, like, not great. I'm saying, no, no, I'm saying, I'm saying, no, no, I know, I know. I, know. I said he was doing great. I, I think you're, doing, you're very confident. What I'm saying is yeah. that, that you're not doing it perfectly statistically right. correctly. I, well, I was, my question is, does that matter? 
I was. I think it doesn't uh, matter. I, most of my hand waving was around the renormalization, where I just redistributed the extra probability more or less visually based on what was there, rather than multiplying and doing it that way. Um, and then there was a little slop with the, uh, the the motion model too, where I was yeah. like, oh, I'll put four and one and one or three and one and one. But that just shouldn't matter. So the algorithm is actually fairly robust to that kind of that, slop. That's, is, yeah, so the, it should, like, even just how, like, it doesn't matter how, like, if, if I don't use the right, like, let's say Gaussian, yeah. it should just take longer. Or just yeah, take a it different should, amount of time. Or yeah, something. I think that's right. I think that's right. It takes a little longer if you don't have this, like, right. nice a peak. Yep. So if little things go wrong, it, you know. It's self-corrected. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, With one caveat, um, and Michael showed me his solution earlier today, um, and this is mentioned in the book, and I briefly mentioned it last time. If you're not moving over by a whole bin each time, things really don't work. So um, the parameters that, that Michael found work well is he's actually moving four meters per second, and he's doing the motion resampling every four time steps. Might be three, three or four. So how many, how many bins is that then that the robot that the probability that the probability should have moved? Off the top of my head. Yeah. Well, so four meters per second is um, and there, the time step is point one. So that's point four. That's point four meters per. So that's four bins actually. For the mean, yeah. For the right for the What's mean. What's the worry Is if you can, can you draw something? Yeah, sure. So we don't share other people. That's probably.